Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. <coughs> The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 243. Please turn to it, page number 243 and today is our lesson number 344. This problem that you see there on page number 243 is the exact same problem that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We have already solved every single problem from this book. If you are interested in watching the original solution, you will find the original solution on day number 134. Let's take a look at it. This problem has two parts to it. We have to deal with a piecewise function and we have to deal with the parabola. We'll deal with the piecewise function first. Now, if you have not watched these two videos, 341 and 343, it is important that you that you do so. Stop this video right now, watch 341 and 343 first. <coughs> because a lot of the concepts that we learned, actually let me let me retract that statement, let me let me start again. Not love the concept, but all the concepts that we learned in 341 and 343 that dealt with parabola will apply also in the case of piecewise function. Everything that we learned on day 43 yesterday regarding the shift of parabola, whether we pick a shift the parabola to the left or to the right or up or down, all of these things that we learned yesterday will apply here when we're dealing with the piecewise function. Now this piecewise function that is given to us here, there are two modifications we have to make to it. First of all, let's start with the let's, let's start with the very simplest one, which is y is equal to absolute value of x. Or we already know what it looks like. We have done it many times. Here is y is equal to absolute value of x. When x is zero, y is zero. When x is zero, y is zero right here. When x is negative 1 or positive 1, when x is negative 1 or positive 1, absolute value of negative 1 or positive 1 is going to be, absolute value of positive 1 or negative 1 is going to be 1. So when x is 1 or negative 1, y is 1. When x is negative 2 or positive 2, when x is negative 2 or positive 2, y is 2. There is nothing new about it. We have done this before. With when x is positive 2 or negative 2, y is 2. Because the absolute value of positive 2 or negative 2 is 2. So here we go. When x is positive 2, y is 2. And when x is negative 2, y is 2. And here is our graph. This is a piecewise function. Now the question is, now the question is, what happens? What happens to our graph if we were to take it, take this absolute value of x, and multiply it by two? What would happen to it? And that's the part that is listed there on that page there. If you read it with me, I'm going to read it to you verbatim. It says the graph uh, is going to be, uh, it's going to get fatter. If c is more than 1, this, this is what they are calling the c, the constant that we are multiplying by. If c is more than 1, the, the graph is going to get, well let's see, I just said fatter, let me think about it for a second. Don't memorize it, just think about it for a second. Is it going to get fatter or is it going to get skinnier? You don't have to memorize it as I said. It's going to be 2 times the absolute value of x. The values of y are going to be twice. The values, the values are y are going to be two times as much for each given value of x. So when before when x was one, y was one. Now when x is one, y is going to be two. It's going to go higher. It's going to not, it's not going to get fatter. It's going to get skinnier. It's going to get skinnier. So here, here is our zero. Uh, here is our x. Here is our x, and here is our y. 0, 1, 2, 1, and 2, x, when x is 0, y is 0 still. So it starts here, but then when x is 1, 
Now it's going to be two times. Now it's going to be two times absolute value of positive one or negative one, and it's it's going to become two. When x is one or negative one, y is going to be two. When x is one or negative one, y is going to be two. See, right there we already know. We started from here. Now we are here. When x is two or negative two, when x is two or negative two, y is going to be four. y is going to be 4 when x is 2 or negative 2. When x is 2, y is going to be 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. There you go. This is our new graph. Let's plug it with the red, red pen here for two reasons. One is so that it becomes easier to look at and second is so that we can hide some of the imperfection the way I drew it. There you go. As you can see it became skinnier. So that was the first part. The second part that we have to deal here in this in, in this uh, in this uh, uh, graph is the part that we're going to talk about right now. We're done with this thing. I need the room obviously, so I have to erase everything. So it becomes skinnier, as just we said. If c is more than one, it's going to get skinnier. On the other hand, on the other hand, if c is between zero and one, in other words, if you were to multiply this thing by a fraction, it will get fatter. It will get fatter. Which makes sense because it's going to open out more. Because if if you multiply it by half instead of, instead of two, if you multiply it by half, then when x is one, y is going to be one, and when x is two, y is going to be two. Uh, y is going to be one. It's going to. Why don't we draw it here? Let me draw it here. It's going to look like this. There we go. This blue one that we just drew, this one here, is y is equal to half of absolute value of x. As you can see, it became fatter. The original one here is right here. This one is y is equal to absolute value of x, and this red one is y is equal to 2 times absolute value of x. So if c is between 0 and 1, it gets fatter. Now what happens? If we, if we stick a negative sign in front of it, if you multiply by a negative number. Now all that happens is that if you multiply by a negative number, then instead of x being, when x is 1, y is 1 in this case, <coughs> in this case, but if we stick a negative sign in front of it, it becomes negative 1, which means we have to flip it. Negative simply means we just flip the graph. We just have to flip it. Why don't we plot it here? There is our original 1, 1, 1 right here, and 2, 2, where is 2, and 2. This graph here that we just drew, as you can see here, when x is 0, y is 0, they all start out the origin, when x is 1, y is negative 1. When x is 2, y is negative 2. And the reason is because this graph is equal to y is equal to negative of absolute value of x. Here we are multiplying it by negative 1. We are multiplying it by negative 1. It's negative 1 times absolute value of x. So if you multiply it by a negative number, all those things that we just saw here, they all stay the same except we just have to flip it, it becomes upside down, which is exactly what you're looking at the parabola. If you look at the parabola there, don't worry about the fact that it's very fat, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it when we get to it, but if, you're, if you look at it, it's, it's a negative, y is equal to, if you look at the equation of the parabola, it says y is equal to x negative x squared over 4. It is the negative part that flips the parabola upside down, just like this one here. As I said before, all the rules that apply to parabola will apply here. They are, they are one and the same. Do you understand? So that was it. Now we have to talk about the shift because it's shifted to one unit to the right. Let's talk about the shift right now. We're done with this part. 
So what happens? Instead of, instead of y is equal to absolute value of x, what happens if y is equal to absolute value of x minus 1? Now, I'm not going to go through this part again. We just did it yesterday. We spent a great deal of time about the shifts in the parabola. The shifts in the parabola are the exact same thing that's going to apply here. The negative one tells us that we have to, we have to, shift it to the right by one unit. Had it been negative 5, we would have shifted the right by 5 units. This is the part that is counterintuitive. Your intuition might tell you, your gut feeling might tell you that if, if it's x minus 1, shouldn't you pick it up and shift it to the left one unit along the x-axis? The answer is no. You shift it to the right by one unit. And, what, and the reason is because by doing x minus 1, by subtract, what we are basically essentially doing is that we are taking we're taking each x coordinate, we're taking x coordinate of each single point and subtracting one from it. Which means it's the same graph, it's the same relationship, it's the same picture, same shape. All the drama, all the play is the same except it's taking place one minute later. If it's taking place one minute later, then oh, if y was 1 when x was 1, now y is going to be 1 when x is 2. Before, when y was 0, when x was 0, now y is going to be 0 when x is 1. It's going to, everything is going to take place one unit later. Let's take a look at it quick here. Let's, let's take a quick look at it here. Here's our x. Here's our y. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now before, before, when x was 0, y would have been 0. But now, when x is 0, we find that y is equal to 0 minus 1, which is absolute value of negative 1, and y is 1. y is 1. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 0, y is not 0, it's 1. It takes place 1. y, everything that, that, that took place before, everything is going to take place one unit later. Let's plot it here. Let's plot it here. And once we do this part, then we're going to put two of them together and we'll be done. So here's the original, here's our original one, 0, 0. When x is 1, y is 1. And when x is negative 2, y is 2. And when x is positive 2, y is 2. This is our original one. Now watch what happens. Now, we just found out that when x, when, when x is 0, y is equal to absolute value of x minus 1. So if x is 0, we get 0 minus 1, which is absolute value of negative 1, which is 1. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is negative 1, what happens? Let's put it in here. When x is negative 1, we put in negative 1 here, we get absolute value of negative 2 and we find out that y is 2. When x is negative 1, y is 2. Here is our second one. When x is negative 1, y is 2. When it's x is negative 2, when x is negative 2, negative 2 and a negative 1 is going to give us negative 3, y is 3. When x is negative 2, y is 3. When x is 1, when x is 1, 1 minus 1 is going to be negative 2. Oh, sorry. When x is 1, when x is 1, 1 minus 1 is going to be 0. When x is 1, it's going to be 0. When x is 1, it's 0 right here. And, and when x is 2, when x is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. When x is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. We shouldn't have to do all of this thing. We should be able to sell right away. What the shape is going to be, we have done it before. Now it's going to not exactly come out ex the way I wanted it. Because it's, uh, I did look very good. Now let's plot it together, shall we? And you will see the same graph has been shifted to the right by one unit. It's been shifted to the right by one unit. It's the same exact graph. There we go. It's the same exact graph has been shifted to the right by one unit. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up our piecewise function by having x by having by the virtue of having negative one along with x in the in the absolute sign. 
that's going to shift it to the right by one unit and by putting a 2 in front of it, it's going to become skinnier. And two of them together, we're going to get this graph here, but it's going to be shifted right here. So our final graph is going to be this graph right here, y is equal to 2 times absolute value of x, but instead of sitting at 0, 0, 0, it's going to sit at 1, 0. That's cool. It's going to sit at 1, 0. Let's plot it here. So here's a 0, 0, 1, 2, 1, 2. So when x is 1, y is going to be 0. And when x is 0, y is going to be 1. And so that's the shift. And instead of before, before the relationship was 1, 1. So when x is 0, y should, y should have been 1. But now it's going to be skinnier. It's going to be 2. It's going to go through this point. And before when x was, x was 2, right here in this one, when x was 2, y is 1. Now x is 2, y is going to be, instead of 1, it's going to be 2. There we go. This, this piecewise function is exactly what we find in the book there. This piecewise function incorporate, incorporates both of those things. It incorporates the fact that it's a skinnier. Let's erase this part so we don't get confused now. It's, it's a skinnier. So this one has y is equal to 2 times absolute value of not x, but x minus 1. x minus 1, one more time. That minus 1 part tells us that it's been shifted to the right by one unit. And this 2 part tells us that it's skinnier. It's this one right here, the red one. It's skinnier and shifted to the right. So one more time, this negative one, this negative one tells us it is shifted to the right by one unit. And this 2 part tells us that it is skinnier. It's skinny. It's not, it's not the original one. The original one was the black one right here. This was the original one. And that's about it. But as I've told you before, we should not have to take this long, this long to understand these things. I want you to familiarize yourself with these concepts so that you can tell just by looking at it in a matter of seconds. A matter of 3 seconds, 5 seconds, 10 or 20 seconds if you're slow. We should be able to tell immediately by looking at it what the shape of the graph is going to look like. Just by looking at it, we should be able to tell it's negative 1, which means you're going to shift it to the right one unit, and it's being multiplied by 2, which means it's going to get skinnier. See? Here, here is, there is our original one. There is our original one. Y is equal to absolute value of x. When we multiply it by 2, the values of the y for each given value of x is twice as much, so it becomes skinnier. Right here, it becomes skinnier. If you multiply it by less than 1, like half, it becomes fatter. Less than 1, but as long as it's, it's positive. Or if it happens to be negative, you just flip it. That's all. Tomorrow, we'll deal with the same kind of concept, dealing with the parabola, so that we can do the bottom half. Okay? Bye now.